So tell me about the story of 8 Mile and then uh, what happened at Baylor and what triggered the article. So first I figured we'd try something a little bit different. Uh, normally we write blog posts and then we put out a bunch of words on a page and you get to read them and have a little bit of feedback. This time we're actually going to pair it up with a video blog and give you a little bit of story, a little bit of history behind where the 8 Mile term comes from. For those of you that are listening to this right now are going to think to themselves, 8 Mile? You mean with M&M? &M? The fuck does that have to do with anything? Well, it's a metaphor or a analogy or any of those uh, allergies. Not stupid, I shouldn't say that. But uh, nevertheless, it's an analogy. And what it means is just a very simple kind of pop culture reference to refer to a very, very pivotal moment in a young man or young woman's life where they have the opportunity for greatness and either they succeed or they don't. So where that whole thing came from uh, was years ago, uh, I had my eight mile moment as a second year NFL player. I had come in and started as a rookie, um, ended up getting hurt my first NFL season, spending the rest of the year on IR, and then the off season they signed a pretty good offensive tackle in my position and paid him like 10 million bucks a year. So I was pretty sure I wasn't gonna be playing right tackle anymore. So I go into training camp as like the third string left tackle. I'm so far down the depth chart that I was on the second page. And lo and behold, first day of practice, that big high price free agent right tackle ends up getting hurt. And the guy that they put in is his backup starting to get his ass kicked. So they looked at me and they were like, hey, dude, you used to play right tackle? And I was like, hey, yeah, go fuck yourselves. Yes, I did. And they were like, well, we need you to go play right tackle once again. Being a team player and the uh, unspoiled, try hard, lunch pail, hard hat type of guy that I am, I went and I played right tackle. And I got a ton of reps, played starting right tackle, second string left tackle, and uh, you know got more reps in that training camp than any individual. And uh, we go out for the very first preseason game and there was a, a huge amount of media attention on that preseason game because the starting left defensive end for the opposing team was the number one pick in the NFL draft that year. So big time, everybody's got their eyes on him, all eyes on me type of deal. And I go out, here's this uh, former fourth round draft pick who got hurt, started, had all this great promise, they didn't know what he was gonna do, comes in and for the first half of football, I do pretty well and handle this kid. He doesn't get a pressure, doesn't get a sack, doesn't even get sniff the ball. So I come out after the game, they put in the, the twos and immediately I'm mobbed in the locker room. And uh, they're like, you know, trying to find some controversy. And, you know, do you think that this, it was wrong that they brought this guy in and this? And my only comment to them was like, have you seen that guy? He's a great player. Uh, if, if I was the, the management, I would have paid him 10 million bucks too. Shut it down, not a single problem. We go on, we come back to practice the next day. The GM of the team rolls over and says, hey, that was a great comment. You could have started a bunch of controversy and you didn't. We appreciate that. All right. You know, I mean, the truth, I mean, the guy was way better than me. I wasn't going to fucking lie about it. So we go out, uh, you know, continue to play some right tackle. He comes back and instantly they move me back to uh, backup right tackle, backup left tackle. So I'm switching kind of back and forth. Uh, we go out towards practice. We're at a drill called nine on seven. For those of you that play football know that nine on seven is a straight up run drill. There's nine offensive players, seven defensive players, and you basically just run the ball. Everybody knows what's coming. There's no uh, mistaking it. There's no trick plays. It's literally inside gap, inside zone, outside zone, power. I mean, there's right really five, six plays that get called. Um, starting left guard, uh, who's also a buddy of mine drafted the same year, he ends up having a rough day. He had uh, been kind of having a rough training camp, and he goes in and he gets blown up on the very first play. And, uh, you know, 9 has got a lot of heat. You know, after the first precinct season game, everybody's pumped up. And what do they do? Same fucking play. So they call the seven play, and, you know, defense alignment usually aren't very smart. But you call the same play two plays in a row in a nine on seven, they know it's coming. And he gets blown up again in the backfield, the tackle gets hit, everybody's celebrating, fucking dancing, doing all this crazy shit, and uh, Andy Reid explodes. And he um, yanks him out of the drill and is literally looking around for anybody to throw in. And as he looks to like left, right, left, right, all of a sudden puts his gaze on me and goes, you, get in there. So I went in. And I knew, walking over the line, getting in, that that was my mom moment, that my opportunity to either be the hero or the coward or whatever you want to call it came down to that moment, and that was my one opportunity. And so running up to the line, and you guys are going to get this, they called the same play a third time. I knew I had one chance to try to knock this dude out. I got down on my stance. I got off on the ball. I actually got off a little before the ball, hit the defense alignment, knocked him over, drove through, bam, we ran for a big run. Everybody cheered. It was great. Walked back to the huddle. They uh, 
run the same play for a fourth time, hit the guy, we go for a big run, boom, whistle blows, drill over. We go to 11 on 11 drill, which uh, is just a basic straight up pass drill. Our 11 guys and your 11 guys, West Coast offense, let's chuck the ball. And uh, that, that, guy, that guy playing left guard goes out and he struggles on the very first play and gives up the sack. They blow him up, yank him out, put me in and have been played. Tackle all those years, playing guard was like candy shop. That was easy. Get a guy in your shade on the three technique, just you know, set him vertical and just set him back and big punch. I mean, that's what I made my money on. That's how I was. I mean, that's my wheelhouse. So I go out and do fine in that drill, at which point they blow the drill up or walking away. They call me over and that move was permanent. And I ended up going on and starting for the next you know, bunch of years as guard for the Philadelphia Eagles uh, because of that eight mile moment. And even though that was in the year 2000, it wasn't uh, until a couple years later when that movie came out with Eminem. And uh, at the time, you know, it was, uh, it was, it's a great movie. If you guys have never seen it, go rent it on Netflix, go find it. And it's about this young rapper, B-Rabbit, who gets the opportunity to go out and he has a kind of trials and tribulations type of deal. And it comes down to this one moment when he's on stage, whether he excels or he doesn't. And he gets to basically set the stage for who he needs to be. And so it just became a prop, kind of this pop culture, kind of quick, easy reference. Like, man, this is your eight mile moment. This is your opportunity. So how this relates and this long-winded fucking story, how it gets back to you guys, is recently, uh, about 10 weeks ago, I had the opportunity to work with a professional, or sorry, a would-be professional baseball player, a college kid who had some back injuries, a couple problems, came to us about 10 weeks ago, going back and training for his final season. And as we were in here in our gym, we just got done training. As you can see, I'm sweaty. I just didn't take a bath. Um, we would come in every morning, 6 a.m., and I would talk to him about his eight-mile moment, that this was his eight-mile moment. He was training for his eight-mile moment because he was going to get the opportunity to go out there and close the game. There was going to be major league scouts in the stand. Somebody was going to be there watching, hoping to God that he is the person that they want him to be, they need him to be, and that he expects himself to be. And every day in training, we talked about, you have to prepare for your eight-mile moment. Now, eight-mile moment happens. And you might not even realize it happened until three or four years later as you're looking at your, you know, fucking unsuccessful life or more importantly, where you didn't meet upon your goals and you thought to yourself, what if only? And that's a big thing with the eight mile moment. If you can look back and think, if only I had done this, then you might have missed it. And um, I had pretty good global awareness and I realized there were certain pivotal moments in my life where I had to succeed. And if I hadn't, I wouldn't be sitting here boring the shit out of you with this story on camera. And uh, this young athlete came in and he made his training. He, uh, he, he leaned out, he got stronger, he did everything. He rehabbed his back, he did everything he needed to do to prepare himself for victory when he goes out and does his eight mile moment. So about that time, I was fortunate to go out and work with uh, Baylor football uh, a couple weeks ago. And as I got, uh, I went out and trained with those guys on a Friday morning, went out and did their prowler sprints and all their stuff and came back and trained. And then they asked me to get up and speak to the team a little bit because, um, you know, not only is their strength coach had been one of our strength coaches at Kansas City, but uh, I know their other strength coach and uh, got a chance to meet a bunch of their players and work with their offensive linemen. And as I got to talk to those guys, I talked about, you know, so much of what you guys have heard me say in the past about moving the dirt, about training is about, you know, just keep moving forward, don't ever stop, don't let everything slow you down. But I also talked about putting in the volume of, of work, the body of work that you need to be successful in preparation for that eight mile moment. And when I said eight mile moment, all these guys kind of like looked around a little bit because I mean probably most of them were born in the 90s uh, and probably had maybe never seen the movie or never seen all the way through maybe they knew the soundtrack maybe they did and I recommend it I was like guys go see that movie you all like it it's a great two hours go see basically Eminem play Eminem in a movie with a with a name change but it's all about preparation the hours that you put into the gym in a situation like this when you get up when nobody else wants to do it you know, uh, going and making sure you get your extra meal before you go to bed, running, getting up and fucking sprinting your ass off up a hill when it's still dark out, when you see people going to work. And uh, all of those little things are all in preparation for that eight mile moment. When you're on stage, the whole world's against you and it's your opportunity to shine. And then from that moment on, you get to go and play in the NFL or go be a rap star or whatever the fuck you're looking to do. But, uh, you know, people don't really realize you know, globally why they're doing this. They just figure like, oh, I'm going to do it. But I think when you work with young athletes, especially going out and working with the guys from Baylor, being able to talk to them about preparing themselves for greatness and more importantly, putting yourself in a situation when that eight mile uh, opportunity presents itself, that you do nothing but succeed. I mean, you have done all the training, you've won so many times that it doesn't matter that you have to do it. Eight mile.